Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Zoologist Moth, and this is probably one of the zoologists I've had the most up and downs with. That I've, I've had this weird just curve of, I really like it, now I don't really like it, now I like it. it it's weird because it's like polarizing and then you can kind of change your opinion. A lot of people when they see this and when they see the notes, they imagine Dark Bee or Night Bee. And I kind of get that interpretation. The more I smell it, the more I kind of make that connection of, yeah, this could be like a night or a dark bee, but at the same time, not really, because although there is some similarities, um, th th there's some differences. And um, some of the differences, you know, I, I don't really think of as bee. Um, so the perfumer is Tumo Inaba, same, same one who did Nightingale, which I, I liked a lot. Um, so I think, um, Jesus, he or she, well, whoever, you know, they, they he, she, sorry, am I going to edit this out? Uh, okay, so I did some quick research, it's a he, sorry folks, dumb American here. Um, as I was going to say, it kind of has this sort of Asian, Japanese, Oriental influence on it. I can kind of see that same kind of gentle, inviting floral that was in Nightingale, um, and this is kind of uh, an inviting, gentle fragrance. We can see our little anthropomorphic steampunk moth. Um, she's wearing what looks to be like a fur coat out of her wings. I think it's a really good picture. I like this one too. And what's also really interesting is the juice is like black or trying to be black, close to it. Um, and I think that's really neat for like the night as well where B is like yellow. So I guess it could be night B. Um, going into the notes, top notes, black pepper, cinnamon, clove, cumin, lemon, nutmeg, saffron. Heart notes, heliotrope, iris, jasmine, mimosa, muget, rose. Base notes, ambergris, honey, resins, guiac wood, musk, nergamotha, oud, patchouli, smoke, vetiver. That's a whole lot. There's a lot in here and it's um, complex. So it's hard to pick out some of the individual notes. You can just kind of get a vibe. Floral, soapy, oudy. So if I would kind of just give this like a little paraphrase of what it is, this would be kind of a floral, sweet, soapy oud. Um, it smells clean, it smells soapy, but it kind of has that oud with the musk, this kind of dirtiness with it as well. Some people have likened this to like an old house, an old mansion, dusty mansion, which I kind of like, honestly. I think that's an interesting vibe and that's something I'd be interested in too. I think that's really interesting and that's somewhere, you know, a moth would live. Um, and that's part of what invited me is like, I kind of want this like, haunting haunted house fragrance and I thought that was really cool. So that's kind of what pulled me to this as well as smoke and honey, which are two, some of my favorite uh, notes and perfume together. I thought, oh man, this is, this is right down my alley. First time I smelled it, this was among the first zoologists I smelled and it was a little too challenging for me at first. And I'm like, ooh, musk and they're kind of pissy and things like that. But now that my nose has matured, um, it's not kind of as oppressively animalic anymore. And this isn't even a very animalic fragrance. Um, it's a little though, it's zoologists. They all are a little bit. Um, at the top, I get that spiciness. It's definitely spicy at the top and black pepper being the first thing in the top notes. I absolutely get black pepper. I've never had black pepper more clear than I have had in this fragrance. You have the cinnamon, the clove, the cumin, lemon, nutmeg, saffron. So it's kind of all that chai tea, that kind of tea notes. Um, kind of what I went over uh, the other day in um, the Zoologist Sloth. It kind of has that tea without the tea part in it, kind of the spices of the tea. And that's inviting. It's kind of sexy. They, you know, I would call this a sexy fragrance. Maybe not sexy to my nose, but... Um, I think people, you know, I think this is feminine, feminine, sexy, kind of like Nightingale, but a different spin on Nightingale. Um, heart, notes, heliotrope, iris, jasmine, mimosa, muget, rose. So it's just flowers. You have the heliotrope, the iris making it powdery. That's where I'm kind of getting that soapy because it is, it's definitely soapy, definitely that clean soapy powdery that I kind of got in beaver. Um, this is not beaver, but that's just kind of the closest thing I could find to it in this all just line up. Rose. Maybe a little bit. The other flowers are a lot louder than the rose. Um, I, th I think the rose could have been a little stronger, but you know, it's just, you know, retrospect, hindsight 2020. Uh, base notes, ambergris, honey, resins, guiac wood, musk, nargamotha, oud, patchouli, smoke, vetiver. Definitely get the honey. Honey is, it's more honey than hummingbird, but it's not more honey than bee. If that may, that's like the clearest thing. 
So more honey than hummingbird, but not as much as bee, right in the middle. Uh, it's like, I don't think anyone's made it more clear than that. Um, definitely get the oud, that's what I would say comes next. Definitely get that oud, it's not a skanky oud, but it's kind of that soapy oud, and then with the musk, it kind of gives it that kind of dirty cleanness. Um, and that's not quite my thing, and that's, I think, what has polarized me the most with this fragrance. Um, smoke, yeah, definitely get the smoke. This is a smoky fragrance, and it's um, it's not an incense smoky. It's like a burned something smoky, but it's not a gunpowder smoky. It's just like you've burned um, something, not necessarily leaves. It's not like a woody smoky. It's just like smoke. It's like liquid smoke, um, which is interesting, and I do like that part. Um, I don't know what Nargamoth is. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, patchouli and vetiver. You kind of get this woody, maybe greenness, the patchouli. Maybe gives it some dampness because it does smell. It's weird. When it first comes on, it's drier, but then it becomes damper as it goes on, at least in my opinion. Um, wrapping it up, I would say this is on the feminine side. And I think... Victor gives us a hint. This is all unisex, right? All unisex, but Victor usually gives us a hint um, with the character, the gender of the character, which way it leans. Um, not always, because I think chameleon, it, I, I don't know. It could be a guy or a girl chameleon, I don't know. But it looks kind of like a guy chameleon, and it kind of goes feminine. This is a feminine-looking creature, and it definitely leans feminine. A guy can wear this, absolutely. It's not very feminine, it just leans that way. This is a night fragrance. Do not wear this during the day. This is a, I think you can wear this every season except summer. You can wear this in spring, fall, winter. You could maybe in summer, but soapy oud in summer is, ooh, I don't think so. So not. I would not recommend it. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, now that bee is out, it soaks up all the hummingbird. All the hummingbird fans, all the moth fans just got sucked into bee. So I think moth and hummingbird is something that's neglected a lot. I love hummingbird. Have a bottle of it. Um, worth a try. As I always say, all zoologist fans, worth a try. If you're looking for kind of something clean but a little mischievous, oud, floral, sweet, honey, smoky, kind of something along those lines, this is a great one to try. And, um, you know, the bottles, it's cute. It'll be a cute bottle. So anyways, that's all, folks. Until next time.